Now is our case and our last case, which is our case number four. This is a 70-year-old Malay gentleman with underlying end-stage renal failure on regular hemodialysis. Came to your emergency department with complaint of bilateral lower limb weakness. He denied any history of lower back pain or any trauma prior to that. However, patient did not went to his hemodialysis for two cycles due to logistic problem. When the patient arrived at your emergency department, you decide to do a 12 lead ECG at the triage. So this is the ECG of that particular patient. As you can see, there is obvious tall symmetrical peak T wave in almost all leads and especially if you focus on leads number two, number three, AVF, V2 until V6. So with the history of end-stage renal failure, patient in fact already missed his dialysis for two cycles and with this kind of ECG which is a very prominent peak T wave at almost all leads, the diagnosis will be no other than our acute symptomatic hyperkalemia. So this is another example of ECG changes that you may have in patient with hyperkalemia. As you can see from the ECG, we can see a long PR segment, or we call it as a prolonged PR, and you can also see a wide and bizarre QRS complex. And usually in this case, the potassium is going to be more than 7 or 7.5. So this is another ECG of patient with severe hyperkalemia. You can see what we call as a sign with appearance. And usually for this case, it's a life-threatening ECG changes. And most of the time, the potassium was sky high, which is about 8 or maybe 8.5 to 9. So this is a very life-threatening and it's a peri-arrest uh, ECG changes that patient may collapse after this. How about this one? All right? This is not similar to the previous ECG. Any comment on this? All right, so the ECG findings for this Particular ECG, as you can see, there is generalized ST depression at almost all leads. You can also appreciate what we call as a generalized flat T wave. And in some leads, there are generalized T inversion as well. You can also see a prominent U wave, which is a positive deflection after your T wave. And for this kind of ECG, if the clinical history is suggestive, you may have this ECG in a hypokalemia patient. So to wrap it up, what are the key ECG features that you may see in hyperkalemia in comparison to hypokalemia? As you can see from the slides, in hyperkalemia, we expected to see a peak T wave, okay, a very tall, and peak T wave, you may also see a prolonged ST segment. There may be a loss of P wave. You may also have a bizarre wide QRS complexes. And in severe cases, you may expect to see a sign wave appearance in the ECG. So how about hyperkalemia? In hyperkalemia, it's a reverse of hyperkalemia. So the example of ECG changes in hypokalemia are increased amplitude and width of the P wave. There may also be a prolongation of the PR interval. As for the T wave, you are expected to see, in contrast to the peak T wave in hyperkalemia, you are expected to see flattening or T wave inversion in hypokalemia. You can also see ST segment depression and also a prominent U wave, okay, which is best seen in precordial leads. And lastly, we may also see what we call as an apparent long QT interval, which is due to the fusion of T and U wave. So you have your prolonged QU segment from your Q wave until your U wave. 
So we call it as an apparent long QT interval. So that's all for our case number four. And that basically concludes our unit of common ECG changes in emergency medicine. Thank you.